Hey guys, welcome back. In 7.3, there's really just one thing that you have to be able to do, and that is answer this question. Is that a parallelogram I see? So your lo lesson objectives are that after this lesson, you're going to be able to identify and verify parallelograms, and you're going to know how to prove that a quadrilateral is indeed a parallelogram. So I'm going to actually work backwards. I'm going to give you all the information you need to know and summarize first, and then we'll go through sort of the details of each one. So here are five ways to know that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And if you look at these five ways, there's really just one brand new thing here at number four, but all of these other things are just converses, right? Converse, 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 and this is kind of the converse of the definition, or not really the converse of the definition, but if you can show that it meets the definition, then that's how you know that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So let's kind of go through these right here. Okay, so number one, if you can prove that this quadrilateral has both pairs of opposite sides parallel, then by definition, that means it has to be a parallelogram. Okay, number two is the converse of the parallelogram opposite sides theorem. So that theorem says, if you have a parallelogram, then both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So you just flip the conclusion and the hypothesis for the converse. So what this says is that if a quadrilateral has both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then you can conclude the quadrilateral must be a parallelogram. And that is how all these converses work. Okay, the only one that's brand new is number four. Okay, and what's different about four? Well, if you look at this, this, and this, you have to know both pairs of opposite sides or both pairs of opposite angles, right? With this, okay, you can just know one pair of opposite sides, but you have to know two things about that one pair. Okay, if you know two things about one pair of opposite sides, that they are both parallel and congruent, then that is indeed enough to conclude that these that this must be a parallelogram. Okay, so let's look at these. This is how we know. So here's your first two converses. Okay, and these look really familiar because these are just the exact opposite of the theorems that you just learned, the four theorems you learned. Okay, so if you're given a quadrilateral and you can show that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then that's enough to conclude that this quadrilateral must be a parallelogram. Likewise, if you know that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, you can conclude that this is a parallelogram. All right, so here's some problems that you can do. So for example, for what values of X and Y is the quadrilateral a parallelogram, okay? Well, this is just like the problems that we did with the theorems where it said, okay, this is a parallelogram, solve for X and Y. Okay, so you're doing the exact same process, but you're kind of thinking about it backwards. Okay, so we don't know that this is a parallelogram. Okay, but when these two sides are congruent and these two sides are congruent, that makes this a parallelogram. So the problem solving is actually the same. The thinking is a little bit, is, is sort of opposite, but the problem solving is the same, okay? So first of all, we would just, we would have to know that segment PQ is congruent to segment SR, which would lead us to just set up this equation, PQ is equal to SR. Then just go ahead and substitute in those values and solve for X, okay? Solving, you'll find that X equals 10, okay? Let's just check this. When x equals 10, are these two segments congruent? Okay, let's plug 10 into this value and see what you get. You get 19 units here, and you get 20, 20 minus one, which is 19 units here. So yeah, those are equal, which means that these would be congruent when x equals 10. Okay, now how are you gonna solve for y? Well, for this to be a parallelogram, these two sides must be congruent. Therefore, these values must be equal to each other. So let's go ahead and solve for y. We already solved that x equals 10. And so now let's set ps equal to qr. And let's just substitute in those values. 
So we get y equals x plus 7. And now let's substitute this 10 in for this x right here. So we know that y has to equal 17. Let's check that answer. When y equals 17, this length right here is 17. And x is already 10, so 10 plus 7 is 17. So that is correct. So that means that quadrilateral PQRS is a parallelogram only when x equals 10 and y equals 17. All right, let's go through um, the last converse and that new theorem. So here is that new theorem. Okay, so for all these other things, all these other conditions, you have to know something about both pairs of opposite sides or both pairs of opposite angles, or in this case, both diagonals. But here, if you know two things about one pair of opposite sides, you're fine. That's enough to conclude that this is a parallelogram. And what do you have to know? You have to know that the opposite sides are both parallel and congruent, and that will make this a parallelogram. Now, if you're not sure, if you're not totally convinced, I encourage you to pause the video and think about this. And visual learners, you can kind of go through and try to figure out a visual counterexample in your mind. And if that's too hard for you or that doesn't work for you, I encourage you to look at the proof on page 383. It's actually pretty cool. All right, our next converse, our last converse, is the diagonals converse. So remember that the parallelograms, if we're given a parallelogram, then the diagonals bisect each other. So the converse of that is that if you have a quadrilateral and you don't know if it's a parallelogram, if the two diagonals both bisect each other, that's enough to conclude that you do have a parallelogram. All right, example two. For what value of x is the quadrilateral a parallelogram? So now we're looking inside at the diagonals. Well, for this to be a parallelogram, both of these diagonals would have to bisect each other. This one we already know is bisected because we have congruent pieces right here. So that means that if this diagonal is being bisected, that these two values are going to be equal to each other. So that's how we're going to solve. So FCED is a parallelogram only when x equals 4. Let's just check that answer. 3 times 4 is 12. 5 times 4 is 20, minus 8 is 12. So we would have 12 units, 12 units, yep. All right, so I have a few more examples of types of problems that you're going to have to be able to solve. But there's no new learning or new teaching. So I want you to just try some of these examples. I'm not going to provide you with the step-by-step -step solutions because they're pretty simple. But I want you to pause the video, and I will provide the answers. All right, for what values of x and y is this a parallelogram? OK, for this to be a parallelogram, x would have to equal 32, and y would have to equal 29. And how did you solve that? Well, we know that angle C would have to be congruent to angle A, so you set these two values equal to each other and solve for X. Likewise, angle B would have to be congruent to angle D, so you set these two values equal to each other and solve for Y. Okay, here's another one. Go ahead and pause the video and try this. Okay, so for this to be a uh, parallelogram, x would have to equal 2 because diagonals would have to bisect each other, so 2x would have to equal 10 minus 3x. Okay, so these examples are really interesting, and visually they can be a little bit challenging, okay? So this looks like a rectangle, but you don't always know that it's a rectangle. I'll show you in the next example. But OK, is this enough information to conclude that this right here is a parallelogram? Well, it doesn't fit just from what we're looking at. It doesn't fit any of the converses or that theorem. OK, because none of those converses talk about, well, if you have a 90 degree angle and an opposite angle is 90 degrees, there's nothing like that. Okay, but think about this one. Okay, 
So the answer to this one is actually yes, okay? And here's why. Okay, you have to draw upon what you learned in first semester with two parallel lines cut by a transversal. We're given that these two lines are parallel, right? So if you look at parallel, parallel, cut by this transversal, what is this angle and this angle? Those are CIAs. And we know anytime you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, consecutive interior angles are going to be supplementary. And if this is a right angle, it's 90 degrees. This must also be 90 degrees. Okay. And by the same reasoning, these two are both 90 degree angles as well. Okay. And so you should be able to conclude, you should be able to figure out why that makes you, allows you to conclude that this is a parallelogram. Because if all four of these are 90 degrees, that means that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. How about this one? Yeah, this one is straight out of that new theorem that we learned. If we know two things about one pair of opposite sides, namely that they're congruent and parallel, that's enough to satisfy the theorem. And that, that allows us to conclude that this is a parallelogram. How about this one? Pause the video and see if you can figure it out. Okay, this one is also yes, and this is straight out of the converse. That says, when you have a quadrilateral, if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then that's enough to conclude that, that is a parallelogram. Here's a tough one. Pause the video and see if you can figure this one out. So this one is no, okay? And this was what I was talking about. This looks an awful lot to me, like it's just a straight up rectangle, right? Because you have a 90 degree angle, you have a 90 degree angle. It's clearly a quadrilateral. So if you have a quadrilateral that has one pair of consecutive angles that are right angles, doesn't that make this a, a rectangle? No, it doesn't, okay? What shape could this actually be? Can anyone think of what shape this could actually be? Well, I'll give you a clue. So even though these are right angles and it's quadrilateral, this side, we don't know that it's exactly congruent to this side. I mean, it looks like it is, but we don't have congruence marks and we don't have any values to evaluate whether they're actually, their lengths are equal, okay? So this side could be slightly longer or shorter, but let's just say slightly longer than this side, right? And so that means that these are not right angles. This is kind of tilted in a little bit, right? And let's just exaggerate this. If I were to stretch this side really far and leave this side here, and then this side would be, you know, angled like that, okay? That is the shape that this could be. And we'll learn more about what the name of that shape is in the next lesson. Okay, try these and try this one. And again, after I show you the problem, pause the video, see if you can figure it out, and then I'll share the answer. Okay, so in quadrilateral ABCD, we have the following. AB is equal to BC and CD is equal to AD. Is this a parallelogram? Okay, so this is a tough question. This sounds like we have two pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So that sounds like it's just one of those converses straight out of the book, right? Not so fast, okay? I encourage you to take a second look at this and maybe draw a diagram. Pause the video, draw a diagram, and see if you can come up with a counterexample. All right, so the answer to this is no, and here's the counterexample I came up with. It's called a kite, but again, you're gonna learn the name of these more specific quadrilaterals later on, okay? So don't worry about the name yet, okay? But this diagram, okay, represents, this satisfies all of this, okay? AB is equal to BC, okay? So these two side lengths are congruent, and CD, is equal to AD, okay? So what's going on here? Opposite sides are not congruent, 
consecutive sides are congruent. So this is not a parallelogram. This is a tough one. Okay, I just have two more examples for you. Example seven and eight, example eight. Okay, so example seven. The quadrilateral has two pairs of opposite sides congruent. Is this enough to say it is a parallelogram? Yeah, this one is straight out of a converse that we learned, right? I think it was the first converse that we learned. Okay, last example. The quadrilateral has two pairs of angles congruent. Is this enough to say it is a parallelogram? No, here's my counterexample. Okay, two pairs of angles are congruent. It doesn't say two pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Okay, and we'll learn the name of this shape later on. All right, guys, that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please enjoy the practice problems. We'll see you in the next lesson.